Cooper Rush led the Cowboys into MetLife Stadium to take on the undefeated Giants Sassine right here on KSAT 12 last night. It was a defensive battle mid third game tied six all handoff goes to Saquon Barkley. He weaves his way through the line bumps to the near sideline and races the end zone for a 36 yard touchdown. The first of the game New York leads 13 six Cowboys answer back capping a nine play 75 yard drive with a score from Ezekiel Elliott. We're tied at 13. Fast forward eight minutes left to play. C.D. Lamb makes an amazing one-handed touchdown catch to cap a go-ahead drive, and the Cowboys beat the Giants 23-16 on Monday Night Football. Rush through for 210 yards and a one-yard touchdown in winning his second straight start. The Cowboys now 3-0 with Rush as starting quarterback. He's C.D. Lamb. The guy's open a lot, makes big-time catches. That fade catch was unbelievable. Kellen had some great play-action calls today. We got some shots down the field, and the uh, guys made plays. Our San Antonio Spurs opened up their 2022 training camp yesterday with so many new faces, you needed a program. And with the offseason trade of DeJounte Murray to the Hawks, the Spurs have gone into full rebuild mode. They all met at the Spurs practice facility for pictures, players, intros, and interviews. You know, it's an inexperienced team where there are players younger than 19-year-old Josh Primo. That leads into Coach Pop's realistic assessment of what lies ahead for the season for the Silver and Black. I probably shouldn't say this, but I'll say it anyway. What the hell? Nobody here should go to Vegas with the thought of betting on us to win the championship. <laughs> and I know somebody will say, gosh, what a Debbie Downer. There's a chance. What if they work really hard? It's probably not going to happen. But the point is to develop this group and give them the best possible opportunity uh, to have long NBA careers and enjoy the hell out of it. And whoever comes after me uh, will have an opportunity to take them to the next level. So how about that reference to life after Pop with the uh, Spurs from, from Hop, Pop himself? One of the young guns getting a little playtime early is Jeremy Sohan, for Spurs' first draft pick, number nine overall, who wear number 10 just like Dennis Rodman. He loves to dye his hair. The new look, Fiesta colors, getting ready for the team's 50th anniversary at the Alamo Dome coming up in January. The big game in our big game coverage has the number five Johnson Jaguars hosting the number six Brandeis Broncos in a showdown this Friday night at Comalander Stadium. Jaguars only lost the season was their opener in the KSAT Pigskin Classic 2022 where they lost to Judson in overtime. Since then they have won three games in a row against O'Connor, Churchill and Roosevelt. For the Broncos, they come in a district showdown 4-1 and 3-0 and and in district with their only loss of the season to number two ranked Brennan. A really big team, a uh, skilled team too. Um, they're gonna give us a good, a good matchup, but you know, obviously, I think we'll come out victorious. I think it's a, a very important game for us. Uh, you know, this uh, this will totally boost our status if we uh, if we come away with the win, uh, with the win, and uh, it'll show the whole district that we mean business. Kickoff Friday night, Comalander Stadium set for seven o'clock. And the time now 4:43 and 69 degrees for now. And as catalytic converter thefts are on the rise, how one state is making it harder for thieves to resell the car part. And welcome back, it's 446. California is cracking down on catalytic converter thefts by making it harder for thieves to resell the car part. ABC's Monica Sar Abdi has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, cracking down on car part thieves. Get out of here, go. New legislation from California making it more difficult for thieves to pawn off and resell catalytic converters. The legislation increases penalties for buyers who can't prove the catalytic converter wasn't stolen and requires recyclers to keep specific records showing they're only doing business with car owners and authorized sellers. By some studies, catalytic converter theft has increased some tenfold, 10x, just since 2018. We're going to get to the root cause, at least one of the root causes of this crime, and that's those brokers and those middlemen who pay top dollar for stolen parts. Catalytic converters can be sold for $1,500 or more. The parts within made of precious metals. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll tell you how you can protect your car. With your GMA First Look, I'm Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, Los Angeles.
and a quick look at the roads with TransGuide. Quiet roads so far. <laughs> Looking at Loop 410 over at Perrin Bidal. Things are moving this morning. Part of my problem driving in this morning about rolling the windows back up, mm -hmm. Mike, and say I timed it just right. I got on 281 headed southbound, and there was a street crew on the freeway, <laughs> and it kicked up <laughs> one mile dust cloud. So I was like, oh, well, there um, we go. Yeah. <laughs> it was nice while it lasted. This is, though, a morning to roll down the windows, though. Yeah. It is so, even yesterday afternoon, because we started getting the drier air in there, and despite the fact we got up to 95, it was still nice. So. Of course. And, of course, hats off to road crews for keeping things yeah. uh, clean yes. out there. Thank you so much. Yeah, but just yeah, make sure you can time it properly and roll the windows back up. <laughs> These guys are ready for the fall weather. Just open up the door, let them run outside, and the problem is going to be getting them back in because it is so nice out there this morning. Plenty of sunshine, a little breezy this afternoon. 91 for a high temperature, so we will still be three above normal, but boy, it's going to be nice. And with this cooler start, it's not going to get as warm as yesterday. Clear skies out there as of right now. 69 in town, 56 ball Verde. 54 right up the road at Bernie stage. Same thing in comfort and we're not done cooling off yet because this dry air and the clear skies light wind will allow temperatures to continue to drop down. So going for drop here in town another six, seven degrees or so before it's all done. Two points down in the low 40s. Just beautiful out there. And those numbers are 20, 26, 25 degrees lower than what they were at this point yesterday. That's how much drier the air is. And the other thing, it doesn't hold the heat in, but it heats up very quickly. So I'm going for dropping down to 63 degrees just as the uh, sun is coming up later on this morning. And then already we will be up to 80 and 86 at 80 at 11 o'clock, 86 at noon. So heats up really quickly. We're going to gain five, six degrees per hour uh, throughout the rest of the morning. You probably watch the thermometer go up and then top off again at 91. Kind of breezy out there later on this afternoon. And as far as question will it last well we keep the dry air around here through the rest of the afternoon and then overnight it almost looks like some of this moisture wants to try and come back in but we get sort of a reinforcing surge of the dry air throughout the day tomorrow and that's going to stick around throughout the rest of the week so weather we have today is going to stay all week long subtle minor little changes and that'll be about it okay down there in the tropics there is the eye of Ian just crossing over the western tip of Cuba and it is just a classic storm it is a powerful storm too at this time yesterday it had just become an actual hurricane getting up to 74 mile per hour winds. Now sustained winds are 125 it is a category three storm it's going to move over into the Gulf of Mexico and then gain more strength and become a category four. Then by Wednesday, we're really going to start to feel those are the hurricane force winds, even though it has not will not have made land by Wednesday at right around noon, one o'clock in the afternoon, and that's going to be Tampa. And it's almost going to make a bullseye right there on Tampa, and it should weaken slightly, but you know, the difference between a category two and a category three is just one degree on the scale. So it's still going to be a very powerful storm and then work its way up in through the uh, north central portion of Florida. And it's going to be a huge, huge rain producer as well as the storm surge throughout uh, Tampa Bay. No impact from that for us, though. Um, 86 degrees at noon today. Sunny skies, high temperature up to 91, sunny, a little breezy. Absolutely wonderful out there. And it is going to last the rest of the week going for upper 50s. Tomorrow, Thursday morning, Friday morning, 90 for high temperatures all weekend long. Now, yes, the downside, kind of breezy today, very dry. Fire danger is high, especially out to the uh, the west in the hill country. And we don't have a drop of rain in this forecast, but meanwhile, but nice, nice weather. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. Especially in the morning. Yep. Thank very you. nice in the morning. 451, 68 degrees. Harry Styles back in the news again. It's time for a unique team up plus an auction for Betty White stuff. That's a record. Four fifty four, a new show looking for the best pizza in the world. Plus, Harry Styles is teaming up with a K-pop group. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, let's check in with Jason Nathanson. Welcome, pizza fanatics. I'm Wells Adams. Kind of seems like a dream job, host of a pizza competition show. And Wells Adams has gone from the Bachelor franchise to the pizza oven with Best in Dough, where pizza makers compete to make the best pie and win 10 grand. Adams tells me hosting the series has changed his tastes. Like, I thought I was just like, you know, like a margarita guy, like simple pizza. But there was a couple that like had some 
some shaved truffles on there and some uh, caviar that your boy was like, mm-hmm, this is, uh, this is very nice. New episodes of Best in Dough drop every Monday on Hulu. A K-pop group and Harry Styles separately making music history. Blackpink debuts their latest album, Born Pink, atop the Billboard 200 album chart. The first album by a K-pop girl group to hit number one. And the Harry Styles song, As It Was, number one for a 15th week on the Billboard Hot 100 singles chart. That's the longest reign ever by a solo artist and a British act. And it's now fourth on the all-time list. An auction of Betty White stuff brought in over four million bucks over the weekend, almost seven times what was expected by Julian's auction auction house. The most expensive item was a director's chair from White's hit sitcom The Golden Girls, which sold for over $76,000. And Goop CEO Gwyneth Paltrow with a big birthday today, the Oscar-winning actress turning 50. While five-time Grammy-winning rapper Lil Wayne, also with a big birthday, he's 40. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathans in ABC News. Los Angeles. Time now, 456 and 68 degrees for now. Hurricane Ian bringing strong winds and heavy rainfall to Cuba right now. We'll get an update on how strong it's expected to be when it hits the U.S. later this week. And we have an alert for Mike. 89 days until Christmas. And if you want to start shopping early, we're going to tell you about Amazon's second Prime Day sale. Don't be mad because we can count, Mike Osterhage. <laughs> Ahead on GMS at 6, high interest rates can make financing home projects tricky, but it doesn't have to be complicated. We have some ways to pay for those improvements without breaking the bank. And a quick check of the roads with TransGuy looking there at I-37 at Houston. We see those flashing lights and we'll be checking in with our Stephen Cavazos after the break. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. At one point, 17 fire crews responded to a fire on the city's south side overnight. What investigators are saying about a possible cause. This morning, evacuations underway across Florida's Gulf Coast. I'm ABC's Justin Finch in Tampa, following the final preps before Hurricane Ian arrives. And taking a look outside with live cam here, we are happy about lower humidity and 68 degrees. Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday, September 27th. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had a wonderful Monday and off to a great week because these mornings are going to be cool. That's starting with today, which we've already given the grade A++, Mike Osterhage. Add another couple of pluses in the next couple of days because it's going to get uh, even better if you like this nice cool weather. Um, yeah, you might need some kids might need an actual uh, sweatshirt or jacket this morning in parts of the hill country. 68 here in town. That bottom number is down to 42 yesterday at this time. That bottom number was about 20 degrees higher when that means there is so much less humidity out there. Relative humidity is just 39%. Now the dry air doesn't hold the heat in, cools down, but warms up. Keep talking about that. So we're going to gain roughly 30 degrees throughout the course of the day today, and that'll be the situation all week long. The aquifer yesterday down half a foot and the allergens, a lot of mold still hanging around here. It really shot up on Sunday, did drop yesterday. The updated count is going to be coming out in a couple of hours. Ragweed and pigweed are both on the low side. OK, take a look at some of these temperatures, dew point temperatures all around the area. We have got 40s everywhere you look, and that's allowing some of the temperatures out here in the hill country to be in the mid to lower 50s as of right now, and will continue to drop down. So um, you may see a couple of now lying areas, a couple of upper 40s in parts of the hill country this morning. Clear, coolish, or just downright cool and fantastic. You're going to love it when you step outside. Sunny, breezy. Great. Not as windy as yesterday, but the 10, 20 mile per hour winds. And then tomorrow, a little cooler in the morning, actually going for upper 50s here in town. By the way, this morning's low temperature, I'm going for 63. That's the coolest that we will have been since uh, five months back in late April. And yeah, great tomorrow. And the nice thing is it keep it coming the rest of the week. Same thing. Nice, pleasant low temperatures still on the warm side of things for highs. But with that low humidity and sunshine, gorgeous afternoons. All the details heading in toward the weekend in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority. Good morning, Stephen. Anything cooking? Yeah, unfortunately, Mike, we do have a problem here off 37 at Houston. Stuff pointed this out as we went to commercial break. Those flashing lights, never a good sign this early in the morning. And what we're looking at is actually a crash scene there at 37 at Houston. Let me step out of the way so you can see that first responders have set up those road flares. And this crash reported just a few minutes ago as a severe crash by TxDOT. And you can see that, of course, it's a pretty active scene right 
right now and traffic is already moving. This is actually in the southbound lanes. They are 37, not too far from Houston Street. Our map has pinpointed it right there. So if you have to travel through 37 in the southbound lanes, make sure that you watch out for those flashing lights and the first responders who are working to clear this up. As always, we hope everyone is OK. Now let's go ahead and give you a quick bird's eye view of the map at 502. You can see there's really thankfully not a lot else to talk about. Of course, we do have that road closure to uh, we'll mention as the morning does stay quiet, but the big issue right now is going to be that crash along 37. So again, just be mindful of that travel times. If the destination is the Alamo City, looks like those northbound lanes on 37 are in good shape. 28 minutes at this hour. Highway 90 looks like to be about half an hour if you're traveling in from Castroville in the eastbound lanes and that arrival from Lytle looks to be about 17 minutes on I-35 northbound. So I wouldn't say the northbound lanes of 37 are too bad at this point, but it's going to be these southbound lanes that are going to have some active first responders out there. Again, we'll watch this thing closely and hopefully in the next few minutes we'll have a better update. Mark stuff. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio fire crews were busy with a fire overnight involving four small structures. It happened just before 2 a.m. in the 2800 block of Mission Road near East South Cross. The owner of that property says he heard a pop and then noticed a fire. CPS Energy says it found an electrical line split with wires all over the place. Investigators are leading toward an electrical problem as the cause, but have not ruled on it officially. The damage to the structures is said to be severe. No injuries were reported. In other news, the state's top attorney tried to run away from a legal battle, according to the Texas Tribune. The Tribune says Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton fled his home while being served a subpoena. Sarah Costa joins us live in the studio with what an affidavit says about the incident and Paxton's response overnight. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, staff. And yeah, Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton responding to the incident overnight through Twitter. We'll show you those tweets in just a bit. So the Texas Tribune cites an affidavit filed in federal court that Paxton fled his home in a truck driven by his wife, State Senator Angela Paxton, to avoid being served a subpoena Monday. So according to an affidavit filed in federal court, in that court document, a person says they tried to serve Attorney General Ken Paxton with a subpoena related to an abortion funds lawsuit against a state. Ernesto Martin Herrera, a process server, says in the affidavit, quote, I walked up the driveway approaching Mr. Paxton and called him by his name. As soon as he saw me and heard me call his name out, he turned around and ran back inside the house through the same door in the garage, end quote. That subpoena was reportedly placed on the ground before the truck drove away. Edetta was attempting to serve the state's top attorney with a subpoena for a federal court hearing Tuesday in a lawsuit from nonprofits that want to help Texans pay for abortions out of state. So Paxton, taken to Twitter late last night, responding to the Texas Tribune story, saying, quote, this is a ridiculous waste of time and the media should be ashamed of themselves. All across the country, conservatives have faced threats to their safety, many threats that received scant coverage or condemnation from the mainstream media. In another response on Twitter, he wrote, he wrote, quote, it's clear that the media wants to drum up another controversy involving my work as attorney general. So they're attacking me for having to having the audacity to avoid a stranger lingering outside my home and showing concern about the safety and well-being of my family. So Paxton has been under indictment for security fraud for seven years and faces a whistleblower lawsuit from former top deputies who have accused him of abuse of office. Paxton has denied any wrongdoing. Mark. Sarah, thank you. This is Suicide Prevention Month, and so far this year, 14 Texas law enforcement officers have committed suicide. So Texas lawmakers are looking to reduce the number of officer suicides by sponsoring a peer-to-peer -peer anonymous support network. The regional director for the Texas Law Enforcement Peer Network, Michael Mata, travels the state raising awareness about the program and recruits other officers to become peer counselors. The program runs through an app that answers a distress call from any officer looking for help. The peers are not medical professionals. I've been, to that, I've been through that kind of situation where I've wanted to take my life. And because I reached out and because I got help, um, I'm still here. Sometimes officers don't know where to go with our own problems because of that, because we, you know, we're problem solvers. We're supposed to have solutions for everybody's problems, right? Many officers fear reaching out for help through their own agency for fear of losing their job or being stigmatized.
And now to Ian, which could become the Tampa Bay area's worst hurricane in a century. The storm is days away from striking Florida, where shelters have already started opening along the state's west coast. ABC's Justin Finch is there tracking the storm. As Hurricane Ian courses up the Caribbean, crunch time across Florida. Families boarding up their homes, filling sandbags, fueling up cars, and emptying store shelves. First thing that's going to go is going to be power and then the water, so just make sure you have a little bit extra so you can take care of yourself and get out of town. Evacuations began Monday in high-risk sections of the Tampa area's Hillsborough and Pinellas counties. We expect to have to evacuate over 300,000 people, and it will take some time. The Tampa Bay area bracing for the worst, its first direct hit in a hundred years. What I'm most worried about are the facts that the fact that these storms are so unpredictable. Florida already under a state of emergency with some 7,000 National Guard members activated. The nation's Department of Health and Human Services also declaring a public health emergency, enhancing the state's disaster response. ABC's Rob Marciano with more on protective aquafencing going up around Tampa General Hospital. This trauma center sits in the evacuation zone. It will likely flood, and this wall is designed to keep the water out so they can keep the patients in. Along Florida's space coast, NASA's Artemis 1 launch delayed again. The agency deciding to roll back its $4 billion rocket from the launch pad as Ian's threat grows. The rapidly intensifying hurricane next forecast to hit Cuba as a major hurricane after battering the Cayman Islands. Back in Florida, Governor Ron DeSantis is suspending tolls on some Gulf Coast area roads to help with the evacuation effort, and more could follow based on Ian's movements. Justin Finch, ABC News, Tampa. Ian made landfall in Cuba just a short time ago. Right now, 509, 68 degrees. Amazon has confirmed a second Prime exclusive event. We're going to tell you how you can participate in the Prime Early Access Sale. Up next, hear from parents and families of the victims of the school shooting in Uvalde as they speak with members of Congress about preventing another tragedy. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, it is 68 degrees. It is really nice. If you haven't stepped outside yet, uh, go ahead and do that. It'll be a nice relief. But come back and watch us then. Of course, of course. We'll be right back. Families of the Valley victims and survivors are sharing their stories with members of Congress, this time speaking from their own backyard. U.S. Representatives Joaquin Castro and Sheila Jackson Lee held a listening session in Nivaldi yesterday. So Rob Elementary teacher Arnulfo Reyes and State Senator Roland Gutierrez also spoke during the listening session. Those who spoke wanted to know how Congress can help and what can be done to prevent a similar tragedy. We're here to fight. We'll keep on fighting. Um, again, I, mean, we just, I know we want to ban assault weapons. It's going to be a hard fight. The fight we're willing to go, go in. Several parents have called for gun reform in the wake of the shooting. Some have asked for a federal ban on semi-automatic weapons, while others have asked for a special session to raise the minimum age to buy assault-style rifles. It's exactly 514, 68 degrees. And coming up, how Meta is making it easier to switch between Facebook and Instagram accounts. Plus, a first look at Netflix's new attempt to create world-class original games. That's coming up. Honey, what's Guy Fieri doing at the neighbor's house? It's Slider Sunday! Everyone grab a King's Hawaiian slider! Slider Sunday? Slider Sunday! We got Philly cheesesteak sliders on King's Hawaiian slider buns. Oh, my. And we've got cheeseburger sliders on King's Hawaiian pretzel slider buns. Slider Sunday! Everything's better between King's Hawaiian bread, especially now with King's Hawaiian pretzel buns. Maybe next time use the gate. <laughs> when a cold comes on strong, knock it out with Vicks Dayquil Severe. Just one dose starts to relieve nine of your worst cold and flu symptoms to help take you from nine to none. Power through with Vicks Dayquil Severe. The daytime coughing, aching, fever, sore throat, nine to none medicine. Dove invited women who wanted their damaged hair trimmed. Yes, I need a trim. I just want to be able to cut the damage. We tried Dove instead. So, still need that trim? Oh my gosh! I'm actually 
actually shop. I don't need a haircut. Don't trim daily damage. Stop it with Dove. 517, Amazon offering Prime members a second Prime Day-like shopping event. ABC's Rhiannon Alley has details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, Amazon has announced a second Prime Day event. The Prime Early Access Sale is a two-day extravaganza taking place October 11th and 12th ahead of the holiday season. It's promising hundreds of thousands of deals and it's only open to Amazon Prime members. Meta is testing new features meant to make it easier for users to manage their Facebook and Instagram accounts. One of those features allows users to toggle between their accounts on both apps once they have been added to an account manager. And Netflix has opened an in-house video game studio in in Finland. The games have no ads and no in-app purchases. Netflix says the facility is the latest step in its move to build a world-class game studio. It's run by the developer behind Farmville and Words with Friends. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. It's now 518. And still problems on the roadway. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Yep, that's right. Uh, before we get to that problem, let's get a quick look around town and see what other drivers can expect for that early morning drive. Thankfully, not a lot out there. You can see that traffic's getting on by through US 90 at 35 there. At 37 here, we do have a problem, and that's that crash that was reported in the southbound lanes. Let's get you to the map because thankfully, it's still early enough to where we're not seeing a buildup there, and that's always expected, but it does look like we still have first responders out there on the scene. No information as of yet, but I'll reach out to the San Antonio Police Department, send them an email and probably get that information a little bit later this morning. But hopefully everyone's doing OK out there. It is taking a little while to clear up. So again, just be mindful if you're driving through the downtown area in the next few minutes or so. Let's go ahead and give you a quick look at the map now at 519. Again, it's just going to be those road closures that are going to be the big topic elsewhere around town, especially along I-10. If you if you've driven through I-10 in Kendall County, you've likely seen that work take place. We are going to see it continue pavement work there that's been current according to Texas. We'll see it continue at least up until Friday, October 28th, a few days before Halloween. It is overnight, 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning is when you can expect the work to take place. Single main lane closures in both directions from US 87 to FM 473. Of course, that information is on our website, ksat.com slash traffic. Scroll to the bottom of the page, find a full list of closures there. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And in this puppy pick, I see a little blanket there as well and maybe we can finally use it in the morning well yes the next couple of mornings especially in the hill country and smiling it says george is a happy baby i think everybody's a happy baby uh, this morning when you step outside because oh my goodness it is nice out there scan that qr code and it makes it a lot easier if you want to uh send us a couple of those ksat connect pictures of your pooch or your kitty or whatever four-legged friend or even a two-legged one you have. We're going to be at the 91 later on today. Gorgeous afternoon. Not quite as hot as yesterday, but we're still going to be roughly three degrees above normal. We're starting off with a lot of clear skies out there right now. 54 Bernie stage 53 now in comfort, and we will continue to cool down for at least about the next two, close to two and a half hours. And so we may actually, in some of the outlying areas up there in the hill country, may see uh, some temperatures getting down in the upper 40s and the reason for it is we've got obviously clear skies you saw very light wind and dry air these numbers are 25 degrees lower than what they were at uh, this time yesterday the dew points the amount of moisture in the atmosphere and that's why it's so nice out there with that lower humidity we did hit 95 yesterday 97 in Pleasanton 98 up the road in Hondo and then yeah in some cases a really big difference with lower temperatures but again all of these numbers are still a degree to three degrees above their respective normals. 90 Timberwood Park. Leon Springs is going to be at 90 today as well. And uh, we're going to warm up quickly this morning. Like I said, we'll continue to drop down the next couple of hours down to 63 degrees. Coolest that we've seen around here officially at the airport since late April and then warms up quickly. So we'll already gain a good close to 25 degrees by noon and then continue to add to that. We'll make it up to 91 later on today. Still kind of breezy and quick check of the tropics. Again, a lot of folks are talking about Hurricane Ian, which again at this time yesterday had just become 
a hurricane and was forecast to gain strength very quickly, and it has definitely done that. It is now up to a Category 3 storm, sustained winds 125, gusts up to 155, and it's going to move over the western tip of Cuba, gain even more strength up to a Category 4 because this water out here is it's like bath water, and that's what it feeds off of. And then it is still forecast to pretty much make a beeline right there at Tampa and make landfall sometime Thursday, late tomorrow night, early Thursday as either a category two or very strong category, excuse me, category three or very strong category uh, two storm. And it's going to just be a monster when it hits right there and a huge rain producer, probably more than a foot of rain, foot and a half of rain in portions of uh, northern Florida. But the big problem with uh, Tampa is going to be the storm surge as it pushes right into Tampa Bay and the way the geography is around there. I uh, heard some reports that storm surges could be as high as 10 feet. 86 degrees, sunny skies at noon and high temperatures going to make it up to 91 with sunny skies. A little bit of a nice breeze out there. Open up the windows this morning and it'll cool down relatively quickly once that sun starts uh, getting a little bit lower in the sky later on tonight. And they're going for 59 degrees the next couple of mornings. Rule of thumb, boy, that's the biggest smile I've seen on your face there in a long time. I've been waiting to use it, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I, and a lot of times subtract roughly 10 degrees from San Antonio out in portions of the hill country. So, mm -hmm. you know, even this morning could see some upper 40s in outlying areas, but definitely the next couple of mornings. That's more like it. Yeah. Yeah, we'll take it. This is 523, 67 degrees. And up next in your morning spotlight, a first look at Jennifer Lopez as a killer operative in her latest film. 526, Jennifer Lopez shows off her action skills. And as you may have heard, the voice of Darth Vader is calling it quits. Here is CNN's Rick Damagella with today's Hollywood Minute. You saw who's out there. It's going to keep coming. J-Lo becomes an action hero. This is your first look at Jennifer Lopez as a killer operative in her latest film, The Mother. The thriller follows an assassin as she comes out of hiding to protect her estranged daughter and hits Netflix in 2023. There is no escape. Don't make me destroy you. James Earl Jones bids Darth Vader adieu. The actor will no longer provide the Star Wars villain's iconic voice for future projects. Vanity Fair reports that Jones has now allowed his menacing vocals to live on artificially by being recreated through an AI program. Something about today feels special. The aliens from planet Schlorp get spooked. Animated hit Solar Opposites is celebrating the haunting season with a brand new Halloween special. Fans will see the Martian trio raise the dead with dangerous consequences consequences when the episode debuts on Hulu October 3rd. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Right now, 527, 67 degrees. And coming up, three of former President Trump's allies are the subject of legal pros. What the new information is saying about Trump's actions. It's everybody's favorite ingredient, butter. We'll be talking about what's causing the price of it to go up ahead of the holiday baking season. And Target is getting a start on the holiday season with some big deals and even a way for you to get some extra cash. And ahead on GMSA at 6 this morning, if you're curious about your family history or where your ancestry began, one local organization is willing to help. We'll tell you how coming up. Three top allies to former President Trump, three major revelations all in one day. What new legal probes are saying about the former president? And a quick look outside with a live cam. It is 66 degrees, really nice out there. A great break. Good morning, it's Tuesday, September 27th. Thanks for joining us. I'm excited about this weather. Uh, as soon as I stepped outside, already felt the difference. You might want to actually crack the windows in the car, truck, or SUV this morning, Mike Osterhage. Yes, yes, and yes. Open up the windows, air out the house just a little bit. It is wonderful out there this morning. We are at 68 degrees out at the airport. That number, dew point, has really dropped off in behind that front that moved through right about this time or so yesterday. The wind started shifting around, and that pulled in the drier air. And look at some of these temperatures down to 52 right now. Bernie stage, same thing in comfort. And we've still got another couple of hours of cooling right before the sun comes up. And so we'll drop into the uh, upper 40s in portions of the hill country. 65 at Port S.A., 62 right now at Converse and New Braunfels is at 61 again. These numbers, look at that, even down in the upper 30s for two points there in Castroville. When you get below 60, 
that's the threshold. That's when it just feels really nice out there. And that's the situation this morning. We do have a lot of mold. It did drop down from the previous day's reading it was up to about 6200 on Sunday, but hopefully that continues to drop down. Ragweed and pigweed are both on the low side. 86 at noon. It's going to warm up very quickly and then we'll top off at 91. So we'll still be about three degrees above normal, but very dry air. Wind is going to be breezy northeasterly 10 to 20 miles per hour, and it's going to get even cooler the next few mornings. We'll talk about that and see if this sticks around into the upcoming weekend. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority still got some problems out there, Stephen. Yeah, Mike, unfortunately here at 37 at Houston, we still have those first responders working to clear this crash up, but I want to take uh, make sure that we take note of this. You see that we have two of those first responders that are out there on the highway right now, the far right lane is blocked off and it does appear that the exit there may also be blocked off with a tow truck, but you got to watch out because traffic that is heading southbound is starting to get a little bit busy there along 37 and when we have those first responders out there like that it could be a little bit concerning if we don't give them plenty of room to clear this up. So just remember anytime you see those flashing lights move over or slow down. Those are the rules of the road. We want to make sure that these first responders can get the scene cleared up so everyone can be on their way and obviously get to their destination safely. But again, Again, watch out there. The crash is located there off 37 southbound right there at Houston Street. Now, the good news is here we are not seeing delays, but of course we know that could take time to clear up. And if, if we still see a scene out there as the morning commute does get going, it could cause some slowdown. So just something to keep in mind for that morning drive. Let's go ahead and give you now a big look at the map because 533, not much else to talk about. And that's great news, especially if you have to head out the door in the next few moments. And if the destination is right here in the downtown San Antonio area, I wouldn't say there's any need to rush either. Pretty green from Seguin on I-10 westbound. 29 minutes at this hour. A little more than half an hour if you're traveling on 87 northbound, traveling up from Lavernia. And it's about 28 minutes for our friends down in Flotusville if you plan on hitting the roads in the next few minutes. But again, watch out here. 37 southbound at Houston Street. We're waiting to get some information from San Antonio Police. As soon as we have that, I'll update you right here on GMSA. Mark Steph. Thank you, Stephen. We have some late breaking news from just north of downtown. San Antonio firefighters have had to scramble to keep a fire in an alleyway from spreading to nearby homes. Katrina Weber is live in the Monte Vista neighborhood where it happened just behind the 200 block of West Mistletoe. And Katrina, was anyone hurt? Well, good morning. No, no injuries, thankfully, uh, and the damage limited to the two buildings uh, where it started. They appear to be some sort of storage buildings. Now, right now, we still have firefighters working in that area. You can see them spraying water on uh, some of the embers that just don't seem to want to die. Uh, but this fire started about 4.30 this morning, and uh, firefighters got the call about the flames that were involved. You can see uh, not much left of the structure. I have some video to show you uh, when things were a little bit more active here. Uh, firefighters were working. They say that this appears to be, uh, again, some sort of storage buildings, two of them involved. One looks like a garage. The other one might have been an old mobile home, but they say no one was living in either one of these, that they were strictly being used for storage. Now, the big question they have is whose storage was this? Because they're not sure which property these two structures belong to. But there are a lot of uh, buildings nearby, a lot of homes, also an apartment building, and they were worried for a while that those flames might spread. They did manage to keep the fire limited to just these two buildings, which appear to have very heavy damage. But again, no injuries, and they're trying to locate the owner of these buildings right now. Reporting live north of downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. The trial for a man charged with murder accused of shooting and killing his stepfather starts today. The deadly shooting happened last year and Sarah Costa joins us in the studio to take us through what police say happened and what to expect at the trial today. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Steph. And this is a story we first brought you here on GMSA in March of last year, the morning that shooting actually happened. We'll show you that crime scene video in just a bit. But first, here's the mugshot of the man accused of murder. This is Jaron Diego Garcia. He was 19 when police say he shot his stepfather. Garcia is facing murder charges. Police say this happened in March of 2021 on the city's south side at a home in the 100 block of Alvarez Place. According to police, a 49-year-old man, the stepfather of Garcia, was 
was arguing with his wife when the wife's son, then 19-year-old Garcia, intervened. Police say Garcia told them the man was threatening his mom just before they got into a physical altercation. So Garcia told police he threw a speaker at the man, striking him in the head. He then went to a bedroom and loaded a handgun before shooting him multiple times in the chest, police say. SAPD says Garcia stayed at the scene and cooperated with officers. Now, the stepfather later died from his injuries at the hospital. That trial starts this morning. Our Erica Hernandez will be covering the story on air and online. Check KSAT.com later this morning for updates on this trial. Mark and Steph. Thank you, Sarah. New revelations about three top Trump allies are offering a deeper look inside the Trump White House. CNN's Amy Kiley reports. The voting. Let's get right Let's get to right the to violence. You. Three top Trump allies, three major revelations, all in one day. Documentarians who followed GOP operative Roger Stone say that video is from the day before the 2020 presidential election. You cannot really nail it down whether, I mean, he's joking or is he joking? And they say this is from two days before the election. The key thing to do is to claim victory. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. Stone says he believes the videos have been manipulated. He says he advocated for lawful ways to challenge election results. The documentarians say the January 6th House Select Committee asked them for the video. It's holding a hearing tomorrow at 1. Their interest was kind of the, the chain from the White House to Roger Stone and almost to Proud Boys and Oath Keepers. That video came out yesterday within hours of news about former Trump trade advisor Peter Navarro. The Justice Department is asking a judge to make him turn over government documents allegedly from an unofficial email account. The third revelation is in these text messages from Trump's then White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows. They're with a man who tried to gain access to voting machines in key battleground states in December 2020. You wouldn't think that the office of the presidency might have been corrupted to the point that it would be a racketeering conspiracy. Mm. But it's the only way to tell the whole narrative of what seems to have happened. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. Vice President Kamala Harris will visit the demilitarized zone of the Republic of Korea on Thursday. Her trip to the ROK comes nearly 70 years since the Korean armistice. The VP's visit will underscore the strength of the U.S. alliance with South Korea and its commitment to stand beside them in the face of any threats. The vice president will reportedly tour sites at the DMZ, meet with service members, and receive an operational briefing from U.S. commanders. President Joe Biden has announced new rules to require airlines and travel sites to be more transparent about the fees they charge. Now, under the proposed rules, airlines and travel sites would have to disclose up front any fees charged to sit with your child, to change or cancel your flight, and for checked or carry-on baggage. Biden's comments came during a meeting of the White House Competition Council, which is charged with promoting competition across the U.S. economy. President Biden said the group was also looking at lowering or eliminating bank overdraft fees and cell phone carrier termination fees. The Congressional Budget Office is warning student loan forgiveness is going to cost the federal government a lot. A new report estimates the price tag at $400 billion over 30 years. President Biden's plan forgives $10,000 in federal student loans for people who earn $125,000 a year or less. The Department of Education plans to release applications for the program next month, and no debt has been forgiven yet. The White House is expected to release its own estimate on the student loan plan in the coming weeks. And the time now is 540 and 66 degrees for now. Need some extra cash ahead of the holidays? We'll tell you how many workers Target is needing in the next couple of months. And are we really headed into tougher economic times? What some of the nation's biggest brands can tell us about the health of the U.S. economy going forward. 540, this is the weather most of us have been waiting for. Much cooler and drier out there this morning. Almost chilly as you head into sunrise in parts of the Texas Hill Country. How much cooler could we get? We'll talk to Mike coming up. Welcome back. Just about 544, huge multinational companies like Cisco, Microsoft, and General Electric are expected to release their earnings in coming weeks. And as CNN's Jen Sullivan reports, experts say if we want to know where the U.S. economy is headed, we should pay close attention. 
soaring inflation and interest rates in the U.S., and a war and energy crisis overseas. And now, at least one major multinational corporation is sounding the alarm, warning that a global recession could be ahead. The recession risks are high everywhere, and in many parts of the world, a lot higher than they are here. FedEx says the weakening economy could cause it to fall $500 million short of its revenue target. The shipping giant says it's temporarily parking some cargo planes and closing offices after demand for packages crumbled. Earlier this month, FedEx CEO was asked if he thinks we're headed for a global recession. Well, I'm not an economist, but you know, oh, I'll, you I'll, know more than economists. Come on, they don't. Uh, they just push papers. You actually look at papers. Well, I, 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 I think so. Meanwhile, many independent contractors who make deliveries for the company are raising concerns, saying rising costs for fuel labor and new vehicles have made their businesses unprofitable, with some threatening to halt operations on Black Friday. Experts say because FedEx ships a huge variety of goods across the world, it's a good measure of how the global economy is doing. Economists say FedEx is also struggling with a big shift in consumer preferences as the economy opens up and we're not buying as many online goods compared to earlier in the pandemic. The shift in what consumers are spending on their money on is really having a big impact on companies like uh, like FedEx. But is the slowdown at FedEx isolated? Experts say we'll find out soon as earnings reports from retailers and manufacturers are released in the coming weeks. That data could give investors a better idea of how the economy is doing amid growing recession fears. For today's Consumer Watch, I'm Jen Sullivan. Now 545, 66 degrees. And are you ready to start baking those pecan pies and other tasty fall treats? Why the price of butter may not be so smooth over the next few months? In your morning consumer headlines, inflation has impacted just about everything, including groceries. Butter has been hit especially hard. The Wall Street Journal reports butter prices were up more than 24%. 24% this year over year in August. Now that's almost twice as much as the overall increase in U.S. grocery prices over the same time period. According to Food & Wine magazine, America's stores of butter are at their lowest level since 2017. It couldn't come at a worse time though with the holidays approaching. We're right on the cusp of peak baking season, which means increased demand could make the butter bust even worse. Target looking to hire up to 100,000 people to help out during the holiday shopping season. The company will also have a deal days event October 6th through the 8th that will feature thousands of deals. Other retailers also getting a jump start on the holidays. Walmart announced last week it will start its holiday sales as early as next month. And right now it's 549. Let's go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos. Yeah, still a pretty big mess out there. 37 at Houston. Uh, you can see there first responders really looks like we have a few more out there. And in fact, uh, this crash scene has been been out there for at least over an hour and first responders have been working to clear it up. But uh, taking a step, taking a step out of here, you can actually see that exit to 37 at Houston Street is blocked off as well. So a few lanes, of course, are blocked through those first responders, but traffic is still moving. Not sure how long it's going to take them to clear the this up. I did send an email to the San Antonio Police Department, but it may take a little while before they get back to us. Usually those preliminary information or preliminary information doesn't get back around until after seven this morning, but watch out for that. We're going to continue to keep an eye on it. But uh, just so you know, I 37 southbound at Houston Street, that exit to Houston Street remains blocked off as we still have a pretty active scene out there. Uh, we're hoping everyone's OK, but it is taking a little longer than we had hoped. We'll watch it closely again, see how that impacts your drive time. Now let's go ahead and give you a wide look at the map at 550. Thankfully, a lot of relief elsewhere on the roadways, but still plan your commute ahead of time because we are seeing work take place here of 281. Yep, over on the north side of San Antonio bridge work that continues actually will continue today, September 29th, and a portion of it will wrap up on Friday, September 30th, uh, Thursday, September 29th. Not there yet. Pardon me. It is overnight, eight in the evening to five in the morning, and that's when you'll see a full closure of the intersection right there at Overlook Parkway. But right now we are looking at this crash. 37 at Houston one more time. Hopefully again before the show wraps up, we'll have a better update, but we're going to keep an eye on it for a little while, guys. Thank you, Stephen. You know, you're talking about uh, hiring for Christmas and yeah. everything. I was in one of the box stores yesterday mm -hmm. and walked in and was like, huh? Oh, every Christmas thing was out. I was like, where's Halloween? And that was kind of wow. shoved off to the side. 
So, yeah, yeah middle already. of September, and they're already got Christmas stuff out. So I'm I, not completely surprised. Are you? No, I mean no. it seems earlier and earlier every, every year. And year. in fact, another problem like, like Halloween hasn't happened. Some of the, some of the stores are already sold out of some Halloween yeah. stuff already. Yeah, I believe that. Yeah. Well, they started some of those sales back in like July yeah. uh, with some of those giant uh, decorations and, and stuff. The other thing though about Christmas though, then you know, second week of December, it's already gone. If you need something, like that's tough. True. Definitely have to be more aggressive as a consumer these days. <laughs> yeah. Grab it while that's you see true. it. That's true. Or live for today. Anyway, yeah, speaking of living for today, Dex is definitely enjoying this weather. Just kind of chilling out there in the I like the green grass too. Boy, that's hard to find nowadays. But thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. And we've got a lot of clear skies. You're going to love it. I mean, just go out and if you have grass left over, line the grass this morning because it's so nice out there. 53 Ball Verde, 52 Bernie Stage. Comfort is now down to 51 degrees. Yeah, been pretty good bet that we're going to be seeing some upper 40s or already seeing some upper 40s in some of the outlying areas there around the uh, the hill country. Stinson is the only, well, excuse me, Stinson Castroville, the only readings that are still in the uh, the 70s as of right now. And again, these are the numbers. We always talk about dew point, and that's how you figure out what the relative humidity is. These numbers were up in the 60s yesterday, 60s and even some 70s. So we're now down below that threshold of 60 and we will continue to keep this dry air around here. We get sort of a reinforcing shot of it. So uh, Thursday, Friday, dew points try and come up a little bit. And again, we're, we're kind of splitting hairs here because we're still below that threshold line and then sort of reinforcing shot of some dry air is going to be coming on in here as we go on into the weekend. What that means is now on the downside, we don't have any rain in the forecast and just dry as a bone out there. But uh, we're going to keep this beautiful weather, not only the next few days, but also today. So we'll warm up quite quickly, 86 already at noon, and then 91 for a high temperature later on today. All right, quick check on the uh, tropics again, and there is Hurricane Ian. You can see the eye of the storm is moving right across the western edge of uh, Cuba. Category 3 storm, and it will gain more strength as a Category 4 and hit Tampa looks like late tomorrow night, early Thursday as a category three or strong category two storm and the way it's positioned, the geography there. And as it's just pushing up into uh, Tampa Bay, it's going to cause a storm surge. And again, I've heard some reports that uh, storm surge is going to be about 10 feet or so and just kind of inundate almost a mile in inland right around Tampa. 86 at noon today, sunny skies, high temperature is going to make it up to 91. Absolutely glorious out there. It's going to be even cooler the next couple of days going for upper 50s for low temperatures and sunshine right around 90 all the way through the weekend. More after this. Good morning coming up here on GMA. It's a Tuesday and I am here in Tampa with a whole team of folks from ABC because we are covering the approach of Hurricane Ian. It made landfall in Cuba. Cat 3, it will strengthen even more as it takes aim right here on the west coast of Florida. We will update you on the track and give you an idea of what's happening on the ground. So many folks preparing, many evacuations underway. I'm going to have the latest, and we've got a whole team again that will be covering it. Then this morning, NASA's mission, a 7 million miles from Earth mission that could one day save the planet. We're going to have new details on that. Some big news right here on Good Morning America. Coming up on GMSA at 6, high interest rates can make financing home projects tricky, but it doesn't have to be complicated how you can pay for home improvements without breaking the bank. Plus, if you're curious about your family history or where your ancestry began, one local organization is willing to help. We'll tell you how, still ahead. And Transguide right now, I-10 at the Y looks pretty good. We've had one incident we've been tracking this morning with uh, Stephen Cavazos. We'll talk to him coming up. Cowboys fans waking up this morning in a fantastic mood after a big win on Monday Night Football in New York. How it all went down, still ahead. And taking a look outside with live cam, this is the weather we've been waiting for. We're at 64 degrees this morning. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is Tuesday, September 27th. Thanks for joining us. What a wonderful morning to step outside. 
definitely. It's absolutely wonderful. This is the weather I've been saying all morning. We've been waiting for most of us, but it's going to be chilly for some folks in the outlying areas. Uh, even 63 may be a little bit chilly for some folks. Mm -hmm. That's the coolest we've been since way back going back to late April, so like five months. And uh, yeah, the, the sunrise is going to be just absolutely glorious out there. No glow of the sunrise as of yet. 63 here in town. That was what I was forecasting for low temperature this morning. I think I have to amend my forecast a little bit because we've still got another, say, hour and a half, hour 45 minutes of uh, cooling down to 52 Bernie Stage, 51 in comfort, 61 right now at Converse, Seguin at 60. Casterville, you're the only holdout as of right now at 70. And then look at that 59 right now in Honda. Absolutely just wonderful to step outside, open up the windows. All these dew points are down in the 40s, even upper 30s, which means really, really dry air. And the dry air not only doesn't hold the heat in with clear skies, light wind, but then it heats up very quickly. So we'll gain. 30 degrees throughout the course of the day. Molds on the high side, ragweed, pigweed are low. And yeah, just spectacular. It will be even cooler than that this morning, so I'll knock this down a couple of notches there. Northeasterly wind then later on today is going to start to pick up uh, at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Not quite as windy as yesterday, but still a nice breeze out there. 86 already at noon. And then again, we top off at 91, low humidity. Yeah, really nice. Then once that sun gets a little lower in the sky tonight, it's going to cool down fairly quickly and it will be even cooler the next couple of mornings. How chilly and will it stick around to the weekend? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, has still got those problems? You know what? In the last few minutes, Mike, uh, we actually have a better update there off 37 at Houston. Looks like that crash has already cleared out. But before we get to that, let's get a quick look around town. There's 90 in Nogalitos. Obviously, we are seeing traffic pick it up there, but just remember to take it easy it's that busy time now. A lot of more people out on the roadways, so we're going to expect to see some trouble areas uh, pick up with traffic, but that's always expected, so don't worry about that. The big issue was right there at 37 at Houston, and it's already cleared out, but uh, keep in mind, it did take first responders over an hour to get this situation wrapped up. Uh, that uh, 37 southbound at Houston Street is where the crash was reported there, and it was the exit ramp to Houston Street that was blocked off for at least over an hour, so Texas reported that as a pretty serious crash and obviously it took first responders a little while to clear it up. I did reach out for information, so we'll wait to get that and update you on it, but hopefully everyone's okay. Now we'll go ahead and give you a wide look at the map at 603. It's just been, uh, other than that, a quite pretty quiet morning. I've uh, been able to talk about some road closures to be on the lookout for, and I'll continue to bring you that information. But right now, if you're going to travel into San Antonio, doesn't look like there's really any delay just yet, especially that journey from Bernie. Looks like you're in the clear with 24 minutes at this hour on I-10 East, 27 don't hurry traveling in from Bolverde on 281 southbound. You can expect 27 minutes at this hour and 26 minutes. Not too awful coming in from New Braunfels on I-35 southbound. So things look pretty normal so far. But of course, as the morning commute does get going, we'll see it pick up. We'll have those updates through you for you right here throughout the morning. Guys. Thank you, Steve. We're staying on top of breaking news of fire in the Monte Vista neighborhood just north of downtown. Fire investigators are now on the scene trying to figure out what caused it. They've been working in an alley behind the 200 block of West Mistletoe. Trina Weber is there with a live update. We saw firefighters earlier trying to put out those burning embers. Have they gotten them all out, Katrina? Yeah, the fire is completely out now. They had to let things cool down a bit before those investigators could go in. But we do have them walking around inside what is left of these two buildings. Now, these uh, apparently are some sort of uh, backyard sheds. Uh, no one living in this, uh, in this area at the time, according to firefighters. This fire broke out around 4.30 this morning. We have some other video to show you when things were a bit more active. Uh, firefighters got in here. They found flames coming out of these buildings. One of them looks like a garage. The other one may be uh, a shed or perhaps an old mobile home. But they tell us that both of these were being used for storage, not for living. They did not find anyone here and they are still trying to find the owner of this uh, part of the property. Now, this appears to be uh, behind a home and for some time it was uh, it was a concern for firefighters that the flames could spread to some of these surrounding homes or perhaps the apartment building next to it. But they did manage to keep it contained just to these buildings. And again, investigators here actively right now trying to figure out how this started. Reporting live north of downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. New this morning, the state's top attorney tried to run from a legal battle, according to the Texas Tribune. 
The Tribune says Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton fled his home while being served a subpoena. Sarah Costa joins us live in the studio with what an affidavit says about the incident and Paxton's response overnight. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, staff guests. Yeah, so Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton responding to the incident via Twitter last night. We'll show you those tweets in just a bit. So the Texas Tribune cites an affidavit filed in federal court that Paxton fled his home in a truck driven by his wife, State Senator Angela Paxton, to avoid being served a subpoena Monday. That's according to an affidavit filed in federal court. So in that court record, a person says they tried to serve Attorney General Ken Paxton with a subpoena related to an abortion funds lawsuit against the state. That subpoena was reportedly placed on the ground before the dr truck drove away. So Ernesto Martin Herrera, a process server, was attempting to serve the state's top attorney with a subpoena for a federal court hearing to Tuesday in a lawsuit from nonprofits that want to help Texans pay for abortions out of state. So Paxton taking a Twitter late last night, responding to the Texas Tribune story, saying, quote, this is a ridiculous waste of time and the media should be ashamed of themselves. All across the country, conservatives have faced threats to their safety, many threats that receive scant coverage or condemnation from the mainstream media. In another response on Twitter, he wrote, quote, it's clear the media wants to drum up another controversy involving my work as attorney general. So they're attacking me for having to, the audacity to avoid a stranger lingering outside my home and showing concern about the safety and well-being of my family, end quote. So Paxton has been under indictment for security frauds for seven years and faces a whistleblower lawsuit from former top deputies who accused him of abuse of office. Paxton has denied any wrongdoing. Mark. Thank you, Sarah. This morning, bond has been set for a 17-year-old accused in a deadly hit and run. 17-year-old Seth Mendel Hall is being held on a $75,000 bond charged with failure to stop and render aid. An arrest affidavit says he hit a man at the intersection of Ramsgate and Stockbridge Lane on the northwest side. 29-year-old Milton Tejeda was killed in the crash. New details this morning on a recent trend that's saving lives. More people are turning to the National Suicide Lifeline for help. Now, back in July, it changed its number to three simple digits, 988. Within the first month of the change, the number of calls shot up more than 50 percent and texts went up 1,000 percent. Here at home, the South Texas chapter for the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention wants to raise more money to hire more people and update its infrastructure so they can take more calls for help. September is also Suicide Prevention Month, and so far this year, 14 Texas law enforcement officers have taken their own lives. So Texas lawmakers are looking to reduce the number of officer suicides by sponsoring a peer-to-peer -peer anonymous network. Regional Director for Texas Law Enforcement Peer Network, Michael Mata, travels the state raising awareness about the program and recruits other officers to become peer counselors. The program runs through an app that answers a distress call for any officer looking for help. The peers are not medical professionals. I've been to that. I've been through that kind of situation where I've wanted to take my life, and because I reached out and because I got help, um, I'm still here. Sometimes officers don't know where to go with our own problems because of that. Because we, you know, we're problem solvers. We're supposed to have solutions for everybody's problems, right? Many officers fear reaching out for help through their agency for fear of losing their jobs or being stigmatized. Well, families of the Uvalde victims and survivors are sharing their stories with members of Congress, this time speaking from their own backyard. U.S. Representatives Joaquin Castro and Sheila Jackson Lee held a listening session in Uvalde yesterday. Rob Elementary teacher Arnulfo Reyes and State Senator Roland Gutierrez also spoke during the listening session. Those who spoke wanted to know how Congress can help and what can be done to prevent a similar tragedy. We're here to fight. We're going to keep on fighting. Um, I get him in I know we want to ban assault weapons. It's going to be a hard fight. It's a fight we're willing to go no in. Several parents have called for gun reform in the wake of the shooting. Some have asked for a federal ban on semi-automatic guns, while others have asked for a special session to raise the minimum age to buy assault-style rifles. It's now 610, 64 degrees. And still to come on GMSA, Amazon is getting a head start on the holiday shopping season with a second Prime Day sale. What other stores like Walmart and Target are doing to keep up. If you're wondering where your ancestry began, one local organization is willing to help. We'll tell you how coming up after the break.
and taking a look outside with a live cam. It's fall, y'all. It actually feels like it this morning. We're at 64 degrees. We'll be right back. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. This morning, Cowboys fans are waking up a little swagger after a big win on Monday Night Football right here on KSAT 12. After losing the season opener and Dak Prescott to injury, the Cowboys have won two straight games. Backup Cooper Rush led the team in the MetLife Stadium to take on the undefeated Giants. Most of the game a defensive battle. New York led 13 to 6 in the third before the Cowboys roared back, scoring 17 straight points to win 23-16. Rush through for 210 yards, one yard touchdown, and win his second straight start. The Cowboys now 3 and 0 in Rush's career as a starting quarterback. <coughs> Well, if you're ever curious about your family history or where your ancestry began, one local organization wants to help. Los Vereños Genealogical and Historical Society wants to expand awareness and knowledge of Hispanic heritage. Now, the group spoke with Erica Hernandez about the importance of Hispanic history and passing it down to the next generation. Our history, our roots, our family is what the 42nd Annual Texas Hispanic Genealogical and Historical Conference is all about. We have some excellent speakers lined up that will be teaching us and speaking about not only DNA, but even some local speakers like uh, the Bear County Archives or our, our own San Antonio Public Library and the resources available to get started even there. Barbara Travis is the president of Los Becareños Genealogical and Historical Society. The organization is helping host the conference that will educate about how to research and discover your family history, as well as a look at the history of Texas. Here in San Antonio, Los Becareños are a great resource for anyone looking to trace back their family history, and they hope their work and the conference brings awareness of our Hispanic culture and traditions. San Antonio is a very rich city in, in, our, in our culture and in our history, and this is how we are going to protect it so that it goes on to the next generation and the following generations. You still have time to register for this conference. Just head to losbejareños.org, and it will take place this Friday and Saturday. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. 616. Let's go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos. You know, we've entered the 6 a.m. hour without any trouble on the roadways. Let's hope that lasts up until morning rush. Let's get a look outside with Trans Guide 35 North there at 410. I-10 at the Y. What a great shot there. And really just seeing folks getting their morning started early with us. I-10 at Callahan. Uh, you can see that the commute's picking up already, but thankfully nothing's going to slow you down at this point. So I would advise you enjoy your time at home, enjoy your cup of coffee, and then of course make sure you drive safe when you get out on the roadways because we take you to the map and it's just a lot of those road closures that we we continue to talk about. Thankfully, though, we're not seeing any red or orange that is building up on the map. Just a few of those road closures that still remain in and around the Alamo City. I mean, it's really a lot of road closures, really. But let's take place. Uh, see what's happening here at 410. Uh, this time on the west side of San Antonio. Now, you may have seen the work take place here already, but this is some part of it that's going to be current up until tonight. So those late night owls that may have to commute overnight or hey, maybe the early bird commuters pavement work will be current until tonight, seven in the evening to five in the morning is when you'll see it take place and it will be an alternating main lane closure in both directions right there from Ingram Road to US 90. But plan your commute ahead of time. Head over to our KSAT traffic page, ksat.com slash traffic. Scroll to the bottom and you'll find a current list of closures. But right now I would say nothing's closed off there at 37. We did have that pretty big crash out there. So waiting for information from San Antonio police. But right now I would say just drive safe. Things look like they are pretty good guys. Good time to head out the door, yeah. but before you do so, you need to watch Mike's forecast. Yeah. That's right. I guess a good day for a hoodie at the bus stop. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say words we haven't used in a while. Sweatshirt, <laughs> jacket, maybe light sweater. What are these nice. things? I know. Um, <laughs> yeah, find them, dig them out of the closet. It is wonderful out there this morning, and temperatures are just uh, absolutely fantastic. Come on, come on. What's with my machines here? Well, darn it all. Yeah, it's not going to show up. See, even the computer is a little bit chilly this morning enjoying this beautiful weather. But look at this picture. Boy, this guy is just smiling there. Looks like he's got, almost got a giant cigar in his mouth. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he's just like, hey, come on, let's go outside. Yes, that is the expression you're going to have on your face. Scan that QR code and uh, you can download some of these great pictures. I mean, that's just happy out there. That will be, again, your expression when you step outside this morning. So we are going to be up to 91 later on today. It is going to be breezy. There's no extra A in breezy. Sorry about that. Got to check the spelling there. So no spell check on that computer. 
You're supposed to check that for me, Mark. Uh, we've got some <laughs> clear skies out there right now. It's going to be a spectacular sunrise. 63 already here in town. 60 Divine and 51 up the road in Comfort. 53 Kerrville. Bernie Stage is down to 52 degrees. And again, this is the reason why these numbers, dew points, sort of measure moisture in the atmosphere. This is how you figure out relative humidity. When the air is this dry, it allows temperatures to cool down. Plus, when you do have much of a breeze out there at all, you don't have any cloud cover, no blanket on top of us, and that allows things to, to cool down. And those numbers, these dew points, are down 20, 25, close to 30 degrees compared to this time yesterday. And it was right around this time yesterday as that front started moving through, and we started getting that dry air coming on in here, and it's continued to dry out. It, throughout the afternoon hours overnight and of course this morning I'm going for 60 now for a low temperature and when it's all said and done and then we'll warm up very quickly already will gain a good 20 degrees by 11 o'clock 86 then at noon and 91 for a high temperature it is going to be again kind of breezy and then once that sun thinks about going down tonight it will start to cool off kind of quickly. All right, there once again, got to keep you updated on this because this is a big, big news story. And there's the center, the eye of the Hurricane Ian, which is right over western Cuba right now. And this thing is going to continue to work its way up into the Gulf of Mexico, become a Category 4 storm, and then it is going to make landfall right there at Tampa, just basically a direct hit on Tampa late tomorrow night, early Thursday morning, and some of the storm surge in and around here. We're looking at winds in excess of 110 miles per hour as it makes uh, landfall, but also the storm surge. Some areas are forecast to be high as nine feet inland, and that's going to be the situation because just the way this is hitting and the way Tampa Bay is laid out there, it is just going to continue to shove all that water inland. So it's going to be quite a mess and quite a almost devastating situation in and around the uh, Tampa Bay area. 86 degrees, sunny skies today at noon. High temperature is going to make it up to 91, sunny, kind of on the breezy side. And then the next couple of mornings is going to be actually a little bit cooler down in the upper 50s here in town and we will make it uh, up to 90 then. So still we're going to be gaining 30 degrees from the low to the high. Again, good in indication of some very dry air and it's going to last all the way through the weekend too. No rain, unfortunately, but just gorgeous, gorgeous weather. So well, as a forecaster, this has got to warm the cockles of your heart. <laughs> yeah, because people aren't throwing things at me, you know, when I right. go <laughs> they're, they're right. like, yeah, I love this weather. Nobody so. likes that. No, <laughs> no now they're going to give you hugs. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, it, it's just wonderful out there. I mean, you can breathe, so. Maybe later, Stephen. What, throw yeah. things at me? No, he uh, was he was suggesting the hug. Uh, oh, yeah. I was giving you an air hug. Get over here. Yeah, you can, you can air it. Yeah, come <laughs> on. Can I, can I just go in there and just give you yeah, get, get yeah. air yeah. here, here. Yeah, let's uh, just do it. Thanks, uh, hug Mike. Hug your favorite you. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Kenny, get in here. Come on, Kev. Come on, Kev. Yeah. He's not, Aww. okay. <laughs> Uh, time check right now, just about 622, and we're at 60... 63 here in town. Thank you. First time awesome. Steve's been in a four shot with us, so... I know. See? It's all right. Yes, it did. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. And just ahead, Netflix is cooking up something in Europe involving their next big platform. We're going to look at their future plans in just moments. Why hide your skin? If Dupixin has your moderate to severe eczema or atopic dermatitis under control. Hide my skin? Not me. By hitting eczema where it counts, Dupixin helps heal your skin from within, keeping you one step ahead of eczema. Hide my skin? Not me. And that means long-lasting, clearer skin and fast itch relief for adults. With Dupixin, you can show more skin with less eczema. Hide my skin? Not me. Serious allergic reactions can occur that can be severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems such as eye pain or vision changes, including blurred vision, joint aches and pain, or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines without talking to your doctor. When you help heal your skin from within, you can change how your skin looks and feels. And that's the kind of change you notice. Talk to your eczema specialist about Dupixin, a breakthrough eczema treatment. In your morning consumer headlines, Amazon getting a jump start on the holiday shopping season. They're planning to roll out prime early access sales, similar to Prime Day sales. Amazon says it'll offer deals on hundreds of thousands of items to prime members. The sale starts October 11th and 12th for shoppers in 15 countries around the world. 
Meanwhile, shop uh, Walmart says it will start its holiday sales as early as next month. And Target said its deal days will be held October 6th through the 8th. And Netflix has opened an in-house video game studio in Finland. The games have no ads or in-app purchases. Netflix says the facility is the latest step in in its move to build a world-class gaming platform. Now it's run by developer behind Farmville and Words with Friends. 626, 64 degrees. And still ahead at 630, high interest rates can make financing home projects tricky, but it doesn't have to be complicated how you can pay for home improvement without breaking the bank. Plus, it was a shocking crime involving a 19-year-old who's now facing a murder charge, the latest on the trial that's expected to start later today. And a quick check of the roads with Trans Guy looking there at Highway 281 at San Pedro. Things are moving right now. We will be checking in with our Stephen Cavazos very soon. People in this neighborhood wake up to flames outside their homes, but firefighters managed to keep the fire from spreading. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you why the owner of this property may not even know about it. This morning, evacuations underway across Florida's Gulf Coast. I'm ABC's Justin Finch in Tampa, following the final preps before Hurricane Ian arrives. And outside with live cam, it finally feels like fall around here. Now, if you come from a place where the leaves have already changed, don't laugh at us. <laughs> this is a very big deal. Good morning to you. It is 630 on your Tuesday, September 27th. Thanks for joining us. Yes, it's a huge deal. We were so giddy just walking outside this morning. I know the part of you that grew up in Michigan is I like. Know, right? Well, <laughs> then again, they get hot when it gets above 80. So, That's know, true. So, same thing. But no, it feels we're, we're all laughing, smiling about this because yes. it just feels wonderful outside that front move through right around this time yesterday and brought in that dry air and a little bit. Yeah, I've got some headlights there, but I think we're seeing a maybe a bit of the glow, the early, early glow of the sunrise this morning. Temperature right now is at 63. This is the coolest it has been here, and this is the other reason why we're smiling since late April. That number has dropped down 20 or so degrees from yesterday. The dew point to measure moisture in the atmosphere, which is uh, that, that just means it's really dry and, and nice out there. 52 Bernie stage, 51 right now. Comfort Rio Medina at 61 and 59 in Hondo. And it will continue to drop down a few more degrees here in town and probably some upper 40s in parts of the hill country. And again, these numbers are so, so dry right now. Those dew point temperatures. Mold is still on the high side. Of course, the updated count is going to be coming out in just about, uh, say, an hour or so. Ragweed and pigweed are all low and clear coolish fantastic this morning and then it's going to be a, a wonderful day today sunny kind of breezy um 10 20 mile per hour winds not as windy as yesterday just a great great day open up the windows this morning and even a little bit cooler the next couple of mornings in then great in the afternoon and nice thing is going to keep it coming all week long and into the weekend. We'll check out how cool temperatures will be the next couple of mornings coming up in just a few minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, you still got some problems out there? Oh yeah, you know, some of them have cleared up, Mike. Uh, as we get a look at Transguide 35 there and I-10 at the Y, it's not looking too bad, but it is definitely getting a lot busier. As you can see now that we're entering that busy time here on GMSA and of course, a pretty busy time out on the roadways. 10 at Hackberry though, still pretty quiet. Morning rush is here and there are a few things to be on the lookout for. We we did have a crash that was reported near 37, but that's already cleared out. But check out our map. We have a new one reported right here as we take you in US 90, but this is in the westbound lane. So if you were traveling out toward Cashville, you will be in the green still because this is actually reported on the Axis Road. However, those eastbound lanes, we are also already seeing a slowdown there, and that's typical because a lot of folks are making their way into the Alamo City, perhaps from Castroville. So just keep that in mind. You'll probably find some delays there if you plan on traveling in those eastbound lanes, but west Bound lanes, watch out for that crash on the Axis Road. We take it back to Transguide 90 at Nogalitos. There it doesn't look too bad, but it's definitely picking up. We're going to watch the roads closely, and as always, make sure you do the same. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. A close call with fires has had some people in the neighborhood north of downtown out of bed extra early. That's right. The fire broke out in an alley near the 200 block of West Mistletoe, not far from several homes. Katrina Weber is there with a live report. And Katrina, what was the extent of the damage? 
Well, thankfully, firefighters were able to keep it from spreading. It did uh, destroy two structures here that appear to be storage units in the backyard uh, of this of a home here. Uh, firefighters uh, got the call about 4.30 this morning. They did find flames coming from what looks like a garage. Also, another building, which is some sort of a shed next to it, did catch fire. We have some video to show you from when... They were working here uh, in this alleyway. Again, this is behind the 200 block of West Mistletoe. Uh, firefighters did manage to knock down those flames. They did have a concern for a while that some of the homes in the area or perhaps in an apartment building, that those flames might spread there, but they kept it from spreading. Uh, they did, uh, again, knock down this fire. They say that this was only a storage facility, that no one was living in these structures. Now, the big question that they had was, of course, how the fire started and who owns this property. They say they were not able to locate the owner of this property. So that is the big mystery here this morning for firefighters. But again, they did keep the fire from spreading to any homes where people were living. Reporting live north of downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. The local trial for a man charged with murder accused of shooting and killing his stepfather starts later today. The deadly shooting happened on the south side last year. Sarah Costa joins us in the studio to take us through what police say happened and what to expect at the trial today. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Steph. So this is a story that we first brought our viewers here on GMSA in March of last year. The morning it happened, we'll show you that crime scene video in just a bit. But first, here is the mugshot of the man accused of murder. This is Jaron Diego Garcia. He was 19 when police say he shot his stepfather. Garcia is facing murder charges. So police say this happened in March of 2021 on the city's south side at a home in the 100 block of Alvarez Place. According to police, a 49 year old man, the stepfather of Garcia, was arguing with his wife when his wife's son, the 19 year old Garcia, intervened. Police say Garcia told them the man was threatening his mom just before they got into a physical altercation. Garcia told police he threw a speaker at the man, striking him in the head. He then went into a bedroom and loaded a handgun before shooting him multiple times in the chest, police say. SAPD says Garcia stayed at the scene and cooperated with officers. So the stepfather later died from his injuries at the hospital. That trial starts this morning. Our court reporter Erica Hernandez will be covering this story on air and online. So check KSAT.com later this morning for updates on this trial. Mark and Steph. Sarah, thank you. To our top headline this morning, Hurricane Ian is getting stronger as it churns towards the Florida coast. The storm is still days away from landfall. However, shelters have already started opening along the east coast. ABC's Justin Finch is tracking the storm and final preparations. As Hurricane Ian courses up the Caribbean, crunch time across Florida. Families boarding up their homes, filling sandbags, fueling up cars, and emptying store shelves. First hand is going to go is going to be power and then the water. So just make sure you have a little bit extra so you can take care of yourself and get out of town. Evacuations began Monday in high-risk sections of the Tampa area's Hillsborough and Pinellas counties. We expect to have to evacuate over 300,000 people, and it will take some time. The Tampa Bay area bracing for the worst, its first direct hit in a hundred years. What I'm most worried about are the facts that the fact that these storms are so unpredictable. Florida already under a state of emergency with some 7,000 National Guard members activated. The nation's Department of Health and Human Services also declaring a public health emergency, enhancing the state's disaster response. ABC's Rob Marciano with more on protective aquafencing going up around Tampa General Hospital. This trauma center sits in the evacuation zone. It will likely flood, and this wall is designed to keep the water out so they can keep the patients in. Along Florida's space coast, NASA's Artemis 1 launch delayed again. The agency deciding to roll back its $4 billion rocket from the launch pad as Ian's threat grows. The rapidly intensifying storm system struck Cuba overnight as a Category 3 hurricane after battering the Cayman Islands. Back in Florida, Governor Ron DeSantis is suspending tolls on some Gulf Coast area roads to help with the evacuation effort, and more could follow based on Ian's movements. Justin Finch, ABC News, Tampa.
Back here at home, we're tallying up donations you helped raise for the Red Cross. Crews helping Puerto Rico after Hurricane Fiona left behind devastation, flooding, and thousands without power in the U.S. territory. In seven hours, San Antonio stepped up. Monday's KSET Community Phone Bank helped raise more than $10,000. Donations are still being tallied, but the Red Cross says they are grateful to everyone who donated. And we thank you as well. Right now, just about what is 639, 63 degrees. And still ahead, high interest rates can make financing home projects tricky, but it doesn't have to be complicated. How you can pay for home improvement without breaking the bank. 642, we think about rising interest rates and we mostly think about how it affects purchasing new homes, but it affects financing home projects too. In this morning's Ask Angie segment, we are talking about financing home projects with rising interest rates. The current high interest rates can make financing home projects seem tricky, but it doesn't have to be complicated. Because staying in place and remodeling means you can hold on to your current mortgage and low interest rate on that mortgage instead of moving to a more expensive house at a higher mortgage rate. So that can really be a better deal right now. You can avoid additional interest payments from a remodel by paying in full. If you do need to finance your project, you can choose between using personal loans, home loans, credit cards, and cash out finances. Just make sure to do your research before deciding how to finance your project. First, make sure you're really shopping around for materials. Some of the price inflation we've seen over the last two years has really started to come down over the last few months, so make sure you're shopping around. The other thing is make sure that you're really being cognizant of the different trade-offs of the various loan products that you're getting. And experts say you should also try to plan ahead as much as possible. This will ensure you get a great contractor and will give you time to come up with a budget and a timeline that works for you. Planning your project in advance also gives you more interest rate options so you'll have more flexibility when it comes to paying for things. And time now, 644, and roads are looking good from this angle, but let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Yeah, we had a few issues out there earlier in the morning, but now TransGuide showing us a pretty easy commute. But of course, it's morning rush. We know that people are going to be out there this morning, so just take it easy. 35 in New Braunfels as we get a look around town. Things don't look bad. In fact, that sunrise looks pretty nice out there, but uh, just take it easy. Although the TransGuide cameras aren't picking up anything major, we do have one incident to report right here near the west side of San Antonio, just outside Loop 410. A crash reported off US 90 westbound, not far from Hunt Lane. Now, this was picked up by our map, and it's being reported along the Axis Road, but it's not causing issues for anyone that is traveling westbound on Highway 90. Where we're seeing that buildup is in the eastbound lanes of 90 right there, and you can see it reflected with that orange line. That does indicate a little bit of a slowdown, but that is Mike right over there. Oh. Hi. 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 Hey, Mike. Greetings. Okay. Hello. I thought we were going. To, there we are. I was waiting for the, uh, the turn <laughs> okay. box here. So. I like the PJs. I know. Uh, Harley's enjoying the low dew points, although it kind of reminds me, remember Christmas story? We need to put on the pink bunny PJs <laughs> and the dogs kind of going. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't have to go outside in these, do I? So. Ralphie. Yeah. Harley Who was the kid that stuck his tongue at the pole and he was like, uh. Yes, that's the movie. Um, <laughs> is, is that the one? Yes. No, but who, it, was a, it was his buddy. No, it was I know his the buddy. movie, A Christmas Story, but it's his buddy that does it, right? Oh, as, a, yeah. as a dare. Yeah. The triple, triple dog dare. Triple yeah, dog triple dare. dog dare. Oh, one yeah. of my favorite movies. And he didn't want to talk Christmas. about Christmas. I know. I don't want to talk about Christmas. But I brought it up, so go for it. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, yeah. Scan the QR code, send in some uh, pictures if uh, your dog doesn't want to wear the funny looking PJs outside. So that's a cute picture though. Uh, speaking of beautiful pictures, look at the glow of the sunrise this morning. Absolutely spectacular. I mean, it's as pretty, it feels as pretty as it looks right now. 63 in town, same thing at Lotus Rio Medina, 61, 52 Bernie stage and still 51. And here we go, 49 right now up the road in Kerrville. That's wonderful to see. And this is the coolest temperature here in town since way back in uh, late April. So about five months ago, Dry air out there, as you saw, clear skies, light wind. That's why temperatures are dropping down. And this low humidity is going to be sticking around for a while. Because a lot of times we get this first surge of really dry air in here, and it only lasts a couple of days. This will last in through the weekend. And that means we will have these nice, pleasant low temperatures the rest of the week and then warm up very quickly. Going to go for 60 when we're all said and done this morning. And that'll be yeah going back to April 26th. We had got down in the 50s here in town. So that'll be the coolest since way back then. Uh, warms up quickly, though. We'll gain good 25, 26 degrees by by noon and then top off at 91 later on today and then 
If you're heading out this evening, maybe a light jacket again because it will cool down quickly once that sun goes down. Got to keep talking about uh, Hurricane and Ian, which moved across or is moving across the western uh, tip of Cuba. There is the eye of the storm. It is a category three right now with 125 mile per hour sustained winds. It will continue to gain strength. And again, this is going to be basically a devastating situation in and around Tampa just because of the way Tampa Bay is positioned. And this is coming kind of like right up the bay and it is going to create a huge storm surge right in Tampa. And some forecasts are nine feet of storm surge going inland in the uh, surrounding areas of Tampa. And then this will continue to work its way up in through north central Florida and slightly weaken there. But it's going to be a huge rain producer on top of that. But the storm surge in and around Tampa is going to be the uh, kind of the, the worst situation with this storm forecast for us. 86 at noon, sunny skies glorious day high temperature up to 91 bit of a breeze out there and low humidity open up the windows this morning and same thing tomorrow or maybe you don't want to open up windows because it could be kind of chilly in the morning 59 degrees going forward here in town and beautiful all the way through the weekend if this forecast was a guitar, Mike would have a tip jar out right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is the time. I like You can still send still, still donations. Send okay. Venvo, PayPal. All of the above. Cash. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Cash. okay yeah. cool. Green just, stamps. Just trying to be totally transparent. 648, 63 degrees. Green stamps. Oh, okay. <laughs> Looking ahead, we are going front and center with a group of Air Force military training instructors who are celebrating their Hispanic heritage in a powerful way. That's tomorrow on GMSA. I'm going to soak up that sunrise just a little bit more on a finely fall-like day temperature-wise. Take a look. The sun just now starting to peak over that eastern horizon. You're starting your day with GMSA. on GMA. It's a Tuesday and I am here in Tampa with a whole team of folks from ABC because we are covering the approach of Hurricane Ian. It made landfall in Cuba. Cat 3, it will strengthen even more as it takes aim right here on the west coast of Florida. We will update you on the track and give you an idea of what's happening on the ground. So many folks preparing, many evacuations underway. I'm going to have the latest, and we've got a whole team again that'll be covering it. Then, this morning, NASA's mission, a 7 million miles from Earth mission that could one day save the planet. We're going to have new details on that. Some big news right here on Good Morning America. Fire in this neighborhood north of downtown gives people here quite a scare. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. The fire broke out in this alleyway inside two structures that were used for storage, according to firefighters. But for a while, they had a concern that the fire might spread. Now, this is an alleyway behind the 200 block of West Mistletoe in the Monte Vista neighborhood of San Antonio. Uh, firefighters say that there was no one living in the two buildings that caught fire, that they were strictly being used for storage. But again, they were worried that the apartments and the uh, homes that are close by could go up in flames. This broke out about 430 this morning. Firefighters got out here. They were able to knock down the fire and keep it from spreading. They did have investigators come in, but so far there's no word on how this fire started. Reporting from north of downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. And coming up today on GMSA at 9, we are shining a spotlight on a fourth grade teacher from Hebner Elementary. She is KSET's Educator of the Month, and we're going to introduce you to her and her students later this morning. This is the week Governor Greg Abbott and his Democratic opponent Beta O'Rourke will face off in a debate hosted by Nexstar Media Group at the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley down in Edinburgh. This comes just six weeks before Election Day on November 8th. Abbott's campaign has indicated Friday's debate is the only one he is willing to do before Election Day. Steve Spreester will be one of the moderators at the debate. We're going to have more coverage throughout the week and debate broadcast right here on KSET beginning at 7 p.m. and it will be live streamed on KSET.com. Of course, it is never too early to start thinking about this weekend. This Saturday, Kerrville's Parks and Rec Department will kick off Movies in the Park. Hotel Transylvania will be playing at the Louise Hayes Park on Saturday. Movies begin around 8 p.m. and admission is free. We have all the details online at KSAP.com.
And looking at these cameras, it looks like things are moving out there. Let's go ahead and check back with Steven. Yep, moving along just fine over here, guys. Let's get a quick look at TransGuide for your morning commute. If you have to head out the door in the next few minutes, I wouldn't say you need to rush, but definitely expect a little bit more traffic than what you would have seen earlier. That's always expected. It's morning rush, so we're going to see a little bit of that build up. And of course, that's what we're seeing right there along US 90 westbound and e pardon me, eastbound lanes, but a crash picked up in the westbound lanes of 90. Just watch out because it does look like the buildup is really taking place in the eastbound lanes and really that's going to be the headline of the morning. Lots of those slowdowns to expect Mike Osterhage. 62 degrees right now here in town 50s in parts of the hill country. Look at that glorious sunrise and a high today of 91. Still have a minute. I thought you said we had 40 seconds to go. Pardon me about that one. All right. Uh, we've got uh, upper 40s in parts of the hill country and Kerrville at 49 degrees as of right now. Later on today, we're going to be it's going to warm up very quickly. 86 at noon, 91 for a high temperature, kind of breezy. And the nice thing about this uh, forecast is the fact that it is going to last all week long. We are going to have temperatures lows in the upper 50s. Next couple of mornings, yeah, Stephanie's over there going, yay, yay. 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 And <laughs> we'll have high temperatures right around 90, plenty of sunshine. Yeah. We are cheering over here. Yes. Delightful. It is absolutely wonderful. Wait a minute. Let me do this so we can get this beautiful picture behind us once again. <laughs> and I'm just going to get out of the way. Look at the glorious well, sunrise. We're celebrating the sunrise, the temperatures. And how chilly is it in the hill country right now? 49 degrees in oh, wow. My goodness. <laughs> Lucky A you. jacket. Burr for <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right, Steve and Mike, thank you guys. And thank you for joining us. We'll see you back here at 9.